As we start our conversation about growth models, probably the most important characteristic that we have to pay attention to is the rate of change. We're trying to see how something's growing, how something's changing. And the way that something changes influences the way that we can figure out what's going on for any given problem. In this lesson, we're going to focus on constant numbered rate of changes. Let's look at a couple of examples and think about how we would figure them out. And let's suppose that you are working a part-time job and you earn a total of $20 for every hour that you work, or $20 per hour is your wage. This is a rate of change because we're changing the amount of money based on the number of hours that we work. If I wanted to use this rate of change to figure something out, probably what I want to figure out is what my paycheck is going to be, right? And my paycheck is going to be equal to that $20 per hour. And then I'm going to multiply it by the number of hours that I work. Okay, uh, another example that you might have seen, you have a car that uh, on the sticker says that it can get 32 miles per gallon. So for every one gallon of fuel that I add to my car, I expect that I will be able to drive 32 miles. So if I want to figure out the total distance that I can drive in my car, it's going to depend on how much fuel is in my tank. I'm going to take that 32 miles per gallon and I'm going to multiply it by the number of gallons in my tank. Let's consider another example. Let's suppose that you want to rent a truck and there's a $125 rental fee, but then you also have to pay $2 per mile. This one's a little bit more complicated, but if we wanna figure out what our total cost is going to be in this situation, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take that $125 rental fee and then we're going to add this information here based on our rate of change. So in this example here, I have to pay $2 per mile. So I'm going to have to multiply my $2 by the number of miles that I used in my truck. In this case, I had my rate of change here. I multiplied it by what was changing and uh, added this $125 flat fee to my cost. If we're going to write these in terms of equations, um, we have two different variables that we like to represent. N is going to be whatever is changing. So in this example, the number that's changing is our number of hours worked and our paycheck dollars is going to be affected by that value. And we can write an equation like this, P is equal to 20 times N. If we're thinking about our miles per gallon example, the distance is going to be equal to 32 times the number of gallons. My P is what I'm measuring, which in this case is the total distance that I can drive. And it's going to be depending on N, which is my number of gallons. And I can come up with my equation. P is equal to 32 times N. And remember, number and letter next to each other means multiplication. In our last example here, our P, what we're trying to find out and measure, is my price of rental for my moving truck. And my N is going to be the number of miles that I drive because there's an additional fee for that.
that's based on the number of miles. In this case, my price of my rental is equal to that flat fee of $125 plus $2 for every mile that we travel. So we call that 2N. And I have this equation here. Now, all of these equations can be are examples of linear growth models. And because of the way that our rate of change is a constant numbered growth, our general formula that we use for any linear growth model is going to look like this. P is equal to A plus B times N. N and P are your variable values. This is what affects how things are changing. So N is just going to be the number of times that go by. P is going to be the value that, of whatever it is that we're looking for. The A and the B are going to be specific for any situation that you start with. The A value is going to be equal to a starting value or a fixed value. If you want to be fancy, you can think of it as the value when n is equal to zero. So in my truck rental cost example here, my starting or starting value or fixed value is this 125. It's not dependent on any changes. It's always going to be there in terms of my bill. The B is my rate of change. And that's going to be unique for every situation that you come into. So uh, back to our truck rental, uh, what was changing was the number of miles, and we multiply that by $2 for every mile. So we can see this is my A and this is my B. Now, if we go back and look at our first couple of examples, notice that we didn't have any number that was being added. So are these still linear equations? And the answer is absolutely. If we're looking at $20 per hour, if we don't work any hours, we don't get any money. So in this case, our fixed value would be zero. And we know that zero is doesn't change the value of my result. So writing this as P equals 20 N is perfectly fine and it does meet the criteria for being a linear equation. Same type of thing here. If we have zero gallons of gas in our car, we're not going anywhere. So here your fixed value would be zero and then your rate of change is 30 mile, 32 miles for every one gallon that gets put into our situation. So this is our linear growth model general equation. And once you have an equation that you can write like this, then all of a sudden you can use it to make all sorts of plans and predictions for things that are going on. And we'll look at that in our next video.